Welcome everybody to our PodFlow One class. My name is Nafisa, and we're gonna go ahead and start in a comfortable seated position today. Um, you all have a prop if you'd like to use that for a little bit more comfort, either cross-legged or kneel down. Oftentimes that can give you a little bit more support to lengthen the spine, but that's completely up to you. Just find yourself in a comfortable seat. We're gonna start class by closing our eyes and finding our breath. So as you close your eyes, just begin to feel the roots of your seat, your sitting bones as if they're deep roots into the earth that can help to ground you. And from there, we can begin to cultivate and find a nice long spine. Shoulders are soft and just imagine the energy reaching out through the crown of the head as you root down through your sitting bones. Now breath is an integral part of the practice, probably the single most important thing we do in here. So we always begin each yoga class by breathing first. That breath will thread us through the entire practice. And we can also take the discipline of the breath off the mat in the way that it helps us to navigate our lives. By breathing first, often we can make the choice to respond in certain challenging situations as opposed to reacting. So we get this beautiful opportunity to practice that for the next hour on the mat. We're gonna begin with equal fluctuation breath, which is a nice way to set the rhythm and tone of your breathing for practice. The nervous system loves rhythm. and helps us to remain calm and centered. It's called Samavriti Pranayama. And I'll guide you for the first few breaths. So let's all begin by exhaling completely into your lungs. Good. Through your nose, inhale for one, two, three, four, five, pause at the top, and through the nose, exhale for five, four, three, two, one, empty lungs. And again, for one, two, three, four, five, pause at the top, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one, find that pause. Inhale again for one, two, three, four, five, and pause, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one, and pause. And continue this breathing on your own. If a di different rhythmic pulse or count feels better for you, find what works. The idea is to stretch our lungs to their full capacity and potential, so it will help us breathe better throughout the rest of the class. Taking one more full round of breath on your own count. At the bottom of your next exhale, you'll open your eyes and we'll slowly make our way into our first position tabletop, coming onto hands and knees. You can just set your block aside if you're reusing it. We'll have the option to utilize it later. But setting yourself up with hands under shoulders Fingertips spread wide and knees right underneath the hips. Find a nice long spine, exhale all your breath. And on your next inhale, come into cow pose. Belly's gonna dip towards the earth. Shoulders roll back. Find a nice little arch, maybe even gazing up if that feels okay. And then exhale to cat pose, press down into hands, knees, toes to curl and round your spine towards the ceiling. Again, with breath, inhale, cow pose. And stay with that nice deep breathing that we cultivated in our pranayama exercise. And exhale, cat. Press, curl, and round your back. Draw belly in and up. Find your core strength here. One more round, inhale, cow pose. Gently dip the belly. Find the length through the front line of your spine. A little pause in the full of your expression. And exhale, cat. Press, curl, and round your back body towards the sky. Beautiful. Now inhale, come to a neutral tabletop position. Walk your hands about a handprint forward. Turn your toes under, and on your exhale, lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Now, as you come to your first downward facing dog, you can pedal the feet a little bit, maybe move around, bend one knee and the other. Whatever feels good. Let's begin to orient yourself in this new position. Now, as we settle into the strong frame of this pose, again, we want fingers spread, just like we had in tabletop position. And in particular, we want to root down through the knuckles of the hands. Think about where your fingers meet your palms. Index and knuckles, uh, index and thumb knuckles in particular. And from there, as we root down, we find this gentle spiraling of the upper arm bones, as if the biceps are going to spin towards the front of the room. 
This will allow the heart to melt a little bit, the shoulders to soften. The hips are lifting high. In fact, soften your knees a touch and see if perhaps you can draw your belly closer to your thighs, getting the sitting bones a little wider and higher. And then you can re-straighten the legs or keep that softness if it feels like it's benefiting you. Keep the natural contours, curvatures of your spine. Come back to your deep breath here within the foundation of the pose you're creating. And this will be somewhat of our home base as we navigate our way through the rest of the practice. Let's take a nice deep breath in together. And at the bottom of the exhale, take a slow walk to the top of your mat. We'll meet in Uttanasana forward fold with feet hip width distance. Now as you first arrive, you can bend your knees, feel the fingertips touching the earth as again we orient to this new shape. Let the head go, shake out the head and neck. You can even draw the weight move forward and back in the feet as you start to find the equal weight distribution before, between the four corners of your feet. Then, now as you feel settled, soften your knees a little bit, tone the belly, and bring your hands behind your back to interlace. On an inhale, draw your heart forward. Think a halfway lift. You're going to do this to open up and lengthen your spine and then maintain that adjustment as you exhale and fold back over the legs. Forward fold with chest expansion. Grounding down through the four corners of the feet, you can begin to straighten the legs here a little bit if that feels good in your body. Yeah. And bringing the hands overhead with that interlace to open up a little bit more through chest and shoulders. Head can relax. Beautiful. Good. That's it. Take one more de deep breath in. And by way of your low back, exhale, release your hands to the mat. From here, step your feet to touch, big toes touching, and heels slightly apart. Ground down through your feet, and on an inhale breath, slowly rise to Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Knees are soft, and as the arms come up overhead, we reach full extension of our spine, reaching through your fingertips. Find some energy through your hands, but shoulder blades drop down the back. It's helpful to spin the baby fingers in a little bit to encourage the same external rotation that we are finding in our downward facing dog pose. Bring your awareness into your feet. You can pick up all 10 toes, feel the arches come alive, and then softly place the toes back to the mat. Thighs are engaged, low belly draws in and up, allowing for your tailbone to reach towards your heels. Now from this position, inhale, lift up through your heart, draw your arms back towards your ears, and on an exhale, bend the elbows Cactus arms. Now pausing here for a moment, your hips are underneath you, your legs are strong. We want to lift out of the flexibility of the low back, working into the upper middle spine here. Shoulder blades draw towards each other and down. Legs stay strong and engaged. Inhale, arms sweep back to the sky. And on an exhale, forward fold. That can be hands through heart or a swan dive, whatever feels good in your body. From here, inhale to halfway lift. Bring your hands to shins or thighs for this first one. And utilizing that little bit of pressure on the legs to draw length through the spine, open up through the collarbones. It's like we're kind of mimicking that chest expansion we had before. Deep breath in, and exhale forward fold. Good. Come back to half lift on your inhale. This time, bend your knees, plant your hands, exhale, step back to high plank position. Hands again underneath the shoulders like we saw in tabletop and downward facing dog. Engaging your legs, pressing through the heels and feeling your thighs lift and engage. Now the gaze is about a foot or two in front of you. That's it, Sean, good. And you'll feel that the neck then is a natural extension of the spine. Feel your strength here, engaging from head to toe. Take a deep breath in, and on an exhale, slowly lower to the mat. You have the option to come to your knees first in that transition, otherwise maintaining the plank until you reach the earth. From here, flip the tops of the feet to the mat, press them down. And on your first inhale, baby cobra. So lifting up on the inhale, lifting chest, plugging tops of feet into the mat, and exhale back to the mat. And there's little to no weight in the hands these first two rounds. Inhale again, cobra pose, riding with the breath, and exhale back to the mat. One more round, inhale, cobra. This time we're gonna hold for a moment. On your exhale, re-engage the legs. You can press into the hands a touch, but think length before height as you come to your full expression. Deep breath in. And then exhale back to the mat. Now from here, we're gonna press back to tabletop for a moment, come to your knees, and then sit back on your heels, or you can grab your block again for a moment. I'm gonna demo an option for our connecting vinyasas. What we just did works as well, plank to cobra pose, or we'll have the option for chaturanga up dog. So I wanna explain the proper mechanics of this. 
So this will be an option from plank pose when we're in between progressions. Once again, we want the gaze slightly forward. We want to maintain the length of the spine here, keeping a lot of integrity from head to toe. From here on an exhale, you'll shift slightly forward and lower down. And as you come down, we don't want the shoulders to dip lower than the elbows. They're either in line or even slightly above if needed. Elbows hug gently in towards the side bodies. And on an inhale, we flip over the tops of the feet and come into upward facing dog. Now the hands are still planted, the head of the shoulders back. This time my thighs are lifted up off the mat as the tops of my feet press into the mat. We take a deep breath here. And on the exhale, pressing back to downward facing dog. Now there's a modification option here if you want to try chaturanga up dog, but the lower is too much. You can always come to your knees, lower part way, come into up dog, or even try cobra in place. All right, let's come to downward facing dog. And you always have the option to take chaturanga up dog or lower all the way to cobra. And in fact, you have the option to skip those if you ever need to and come straight back to downward facing dog. Now exhale all the breath from your lungs. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, step or top, jump, hop to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to stand, upward salute, arms sweeping to the sky. Top of your breath, lift your heart, draw your arms back. Stay here or exhale, bend the elbows, cactus arms. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back to plank. Stay for an inhale breath, lean slightly forward. And exhale, lower partway chaturanga or to the earth, your choice. Inhale as upward facing dog or cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. I need a few deep breaths here. And we'll roll through that one more time, building heat, warming up the body from head to toe. Let's take another exhale together, empty the lungs. Deep breath to prepare. And exhale, step or hop to the top of your mat. Good. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms sweep up. Urdhva Hastasana. Draw the arms back and stay, or exhale, bend the elbows. Open the heart. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend the knees, plant the hands, and exhale, step back to plank position. Stay for an inhale, lean slightly forward, and exhale, chaturanga, or to the earth. Inhale, opens the heart, up dog or cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Five deep breaths here. Now you always have the option to come down to child's pose with knees wide, toes touching if you need a break. Finding your breath is the most important key. And again, as I mentioned, this is somewhat of a home base here where we can collect ourselves, integrate the energy we're creating in our movements by always coming home to the breath as our baseline. And moving on to the next section, let's start by exhaling the breath again, empty lungs. Next, inhale, reach your right leg back. Pause for a moment, draw your left hip back. The idea is to find level hips even within this asymmetry. So think more of the length of your leg as opposed to the height. Yeah, take a nice deep breath and exhale, knee to navel, curl and round. And as you do, press down into your hands, find that cat pose again. Yes, inhale, right leg, reach it back. And exhale, knee to navel, same shape. This time, look, step forward to a lunge position the top of the mat. Good. Right foot is just inside of your right fingertips. We want hip width distance between the feet and that'll give you a little more ability to level out your hips. You can even lift the hips a little bit to make an adjustment. You want to draw the right hip back and the left hip will come forward. It's as if you're dragging your feet together on the mat to create this interaction and activation of the inner line of your legs. Now we're going to hold on to that but we're going to come down to our left knee. Bring it to the mat. You have the option if that bothers your knee to turn your mat over, create some padding, or you can always grab a blanket. Bring your hands to your upper thigh. Now from here we find level hips to start, and you can see that from this side. We'll take a nice deep breath, keep a long spine, and exhale deepen into your front knee. The target area is opening the left thigh and frontal hip flexors. Inhale, pull back to neutral. And exhale again, deepen in. So it's kind of massaging that frontal area. One more time, inhale, squeeze back. And exhale, deepen in. 
Now this time we're going to maintain the depth for the stretch sake. You're going to kind of squeeze your feet together, find that lunge action, and inhale your arms up and slightly back, crescent moon. And finding the length down the whole front line of your body now, from front of the left knee through the thigh, low belly, all the way through your fingertips. Gaze can be slightly up, but always considering a little micro tuck of the chin so we don't collapse the neck. Take one more deep breath here. And on your exhale, hands to earth, come back to lunge position, back knee lifts. Good. From here, left hand either to your mat, or you can also take it to a block for a little bit more support. Take your right thumb to your hip crease, pull it back. You're activating that same uh, action we were doing in the legs from the lunge position. And then press into your left hand and begin to turn yourself towards your right. So it'll be rib cage, chest, shoulders, and gaze. And now reach your right arm up towards the sky for a lunge twist. Good. I want the shoulder to drive a little faster than the hand, and that's going to help orient this twist in the spine. Think of drawing the right hip back and keeping a little lift in your left hip so we sustain that foundation that we began with. Beautiful. And then reaching through the crown of the head, find that length, take one more deep breath in, and exhale right hand to the mat. Step your left foot forward to meet your right, inhale halfway lift at the top of your mat, exhale forward fold. Bend your knees, sit your hips low, inhale Utkatasana, chair pose. This is gonna create a little more energy in the legs, a little more action. Imagine you're shifting your weight a little bit more towards your heels. We'll still keep the weight bearing in the four corners, but pull back through the kneecaps too, so we can feel a little bit more. Yeah, that's it, Keith. Sit nice and low. Draw the low belly in and up, supporting the natural curves of your spine. Shoulders are soft. Take a deep breath here. On your exhale, airplane arms. So a little flying Utkatasana. Palms face down, chest is nice and bright. Perhaps you can sit a little bit lower here. Make sure the big toes are touching, heels are slightly apart so we get that inward rotation. So you might adjust your toes a little there, Sean. That's it, good. Exhale all your breath. Inhale back to Utkatasana, chair pose. And exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Nice breathing, you guys. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back to plank. Stay for an inhale, shift slightly forward in your choice. Exhale, lower or always option straight to down dog. Inhale is up dog or cobra if you lowered. Exhale, downward facing dog. A few deep breaths to integrate all of that information here. Coming back to the breath, finding that nice frame in your home base pose. Good. That's it. Now exhale all the breath from the lungs. Inhale, reach your left leg back. Pausing here, yep, there's a little reorientation. We find that asymmetry. See if you can draw a little bit more length through your right side. That's it. Keep pressing into your hands, take a deep breath. Exhale, knee to navel. Curling round, press downward, good. Inhale, left leg reaches back. Exhale, knee to navel. Kind of hold that shape briefly, then look, step forward to lunge. Left foot stepping just inside of your left fingertips, allowing for hip width stance. And again, if you give your hips a little bit of elevation here, often you can make that adjustment. That's it, Kate. Yep, so left hip's drawing back. Right hip has a little bit of elevation in line with the left. From here, we'll bring the right knee to the mat this time. Option to pad as needed. Climb your hands to your upper thigh. You're going to press down, which can help you lengthen your spine. Feel that same kind of scissoring effect of the thighs. Take a deep breath and exhale, deepen into the front knee. We really find that focus on the right thigh and hip. Inhale, squeeze back to neutral. Use your legs. Exhale, deepen in. And the spine stays long here. One more time. Inhale, squeeze back. And exhale, deepen in. And within this depth, we see if we can find some leveling. So feel the squeeze for support and stability. And inhale your arms up and draw them back. A slight back bend here. Reaching energy through the fingers, shoulders down the back. Remembering to keep that stabilizing factor of the lower body. A little squeeze of the feet towards each other. Low belly drawing in and up, protecting your back. One more deep breath here. And exhale, hands to the mat, lunge. Back knee lifts, and right hand comes to floor or to a block. Take your left thumb to your left hip crease, draw it back, so get, you're just managing that squeeze effect. And then press into the right hand and turn your gaze, chest, ribs. Good, and then the left arm reaches up into the plane that you've already created through that rotation. 
Now really charge your back leg strong, lifting the thigh. That'll elevate the hip. We focus on that foundation first and then the length and then the mobility. Got to press into my hand. Yeah, get your shoulder back a little bit. Finding that twist, we'll take one more deep breath. There you go. And exhale, left hand to the mat. Step your right foot to left, inhale, half lift at the top of your mat. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, sit your hips, inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. This time, right into airplane arms, exhale, arms sweep back, sit hips low. Two more like that, inhale, arms up to chair. Exhale, sweep and back, sit low. One more time, nice and slow, inhale, full breath, and exhale, arms back. Good, inhale, back to chair pose. And exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back to plank. Stay for an inhale, lean slightly forward. Exhale, lower or straight to down dog. Inhale, open the heart, up dog or cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice work, everyone. Finding your breath here and taking care of yourself, whatever that means for you in each moment. Good. Beautiful. We're going to begin to set some roots for another flow section. So let's begin by exhaling all the breath from the lungs. Uh, next inhale, right leg reaches back. Exhale, step through to lunge. Now finding that same base work in your legs, inhale, arms sweep to the sky this time for crescent lunge. You might feel a little wobbly on your way up. So let's take a moment to bring hands to hips. It's a new orientation of the spine with the same key actions of the lower body. Bend your left knee a little bit, and as you do, it'll take some of the pressure out. You can pin the right hip back a little easier. That's it. Nice, Lydia. Now deepen into the front knee so it's right over your ankle. Perfect. Now re-engage your back leg if it's bent, and keeping that base, inhale, arms overhead. You can keep a softness in the back knee, whatever's going to help to take any pressure, unnecessary pressure, off of the low back. And shoulders are soft even as we reach vibrantly through the fingertips. Draw the low belly in and up. That's going to create the tailbone lengthening. And again, that support in the low back. And it's connected to that squeeze you're feeling in your inner thighs. Deep breath in here. On your exhale, flying lunge. Like we did in the chair pose, arms sweep back, palms face down. Now, feet are still hip width here. Lift your back heel a little bit. As you do that, squeeze the right hip back. Gives you a little more room to do. And then deepen front knee over the ankle and press back heel. Now your back thigh is super engaged this time, where we had the option for softness in the crescent lunge. Here we want to really engage and reach through the crown of the head. Reach in opposition back through the fingertips. Exhale all the breath from your lungs. Inhale back to crescent, arms sweep up. And this time on your exhale, bend your left knee and bend your elbows, cactus arms. We're not here long. Think of drawing your left knee forward, pinning your right hip back, lifting through your heart and through your gaze. Next, inhale back to crescent, arms up, back leg strong. Exhale, hands to the mat, lunge. Inhale, plank position, step back. Exhale, chaturanga or to the mat. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. A few breaths here, settling in. We feel the current start to build in the body and the breath is what helps to Root that, settle that energy so we can source from it. Exhale all the breath. Left side, inhale, left leg reaches back. Exhale, step through to lunge. Again, find your foundation, that squeeze in the legs, and from there, inhale, crescent lunge, arms sweep to the sky. Now, the arms initially bring us up, but let's bring hands to hips again and take a moment and coordinate some of this alignment. Bend your right knee a little bit. This also helps with that third pose we do here. And then again, the left hips drawing back a little bit. Yeah, you center your hips towards the front of the room. Deepen into the front knee so it's right over the ankle, and then start to re-engage your back leg. Now keeping your low belly and supporting back, inhale, arms sweep to the sky. Good. Easing one point, finding the integrity in the legs that stays true for this whole progression. When we feel the heat build, we ignite the breath within that. Deep, full breath here. Flying lunge, exhale, arms sweep back, palms face down. Think bright through the chest, open through the heart. 
Lift your back heel a little bit like we did before and see if that gives you a little more ability to pin the left hip back, center the hips. Yes, now deepen back into the front knee and really charge your back leg. Feel that line of energy from head to back foot. Exhale completely. Inhale, crescent, arms sweep up. And then bend your right knee, bend the elbows, exhale, cactus arms. Pause here for a moment, lifting out of the flexibility of your low back into your upper spine. Stay true to front knee, think of drawing the right knee forward a touch in that bend. And inhale, back to crescent, back leg strong. Exhale, hands to earth, lunge. Inhale, step to plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. A few deep breaths as that settles. Now getting back to the intention that we set in the beginning, we'll flow through those postures, one time breath to movement. Again, obviously building heat, but also consider the map that you've created in your body. Your body knows the alignment, and this allows us to free up a little bit and just get right back to the source of the practice, which is the breath. Exhale all the breath from your lungs. Inhale, right leg, reach it back. Exhale, step through, lunge. Inhale, crescent, arms sweep up. Exhale, flying lunge, arms sweep back. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, bend the knee, bend the elbows, open heart. Inhale, crescent. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower or to down dog. Inhale, opens the heart, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna keep flowing, so left leg inhale, reach it back. Exhale, step through to lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge, arms sweep up. Exhale, fly and lunge, arms sweep back. Inhale, through crescent, arms up. Exhale, bend the back knee, bend the elbows, open heart. Yeah, inhale, crescent. Exhale, lunge. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower or down dog, always your choice. Inhale, open to the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. We'll take a few breaths here. Here or child's pose, always an option. You can be where you can ground and integrate. Good. Just feel that energy swirling through the body and the breath is the anchor to start to settle it. Now, if you're in child's pose, you can always stay here longer if needed. Otherwise, you'll make your way back to downward facing dog. We'll move to our next progression. Now, from downward dog, inhale, lift your heels and ripple forward to a high plank position. Now, keeping the structure of high plank, we're coming into forearm plank. You're going to come down to right forearm and left forearm, and you have options here that the forearms can either remain parallel or you can clasp your hands, make more of a triad between hands and elbows. Either way, we wanna root down, kinda of press down and forward, and the gaze, just like our plank, is a foot or two in front of you, so the neck extends naturally from the spine. Now this one can tend to build heat and intensity very quickly. You know, you always have the option to come to your knees, do not be afraid to do that. You can always come back into the pose when you're ready. We're gonna hold for a minute, and we're already almost halfway there. Press back through your heels and lift your thighs. Draw your low belly in and up. We find all these points of activation that makes the pose more sustainable. It's almost as if you're drawing your pubic bone towards your sternum and your tailbone down towards your heels. We want the hips right in line with shoulders. So it's not too high to get into the shoulders, not too low to compromise the low back. We're here for just a few more seconds. Stay with your breath. And we're here for five, four, three, Two and one. Good. Lower your hips to the mat. Nice job, you guys. I oh, feel that heat now. Now bring your hands behind your back. Come into locust pose. Give a nice release of the shoulders and some spine strengthening. To begin, tops of feet root down, feel your legs engage. Exhale all the breath from the lungs. And on your inhale, start to peel your chest up like we did in Cobra, but with hands interlaced. Hands can start to lift away from the low back if that's available. And you can either keep the tops of the feet continued to press down or you can lift the legs up and fly a little bit more. Gaze again is more forward and down rather than up so we don't crunch and wrinkle the back of the neck. Think of extending forward and back. We're here for one more breath, lift a little higher, and then exhale back to the mat, release your hands. Bring one hand and then the other. 
on top of each other, forehead to the mat. You might shake your hips side to side a little bit to feel a little release. And then from here, take your hands under your shoulders, press to your knees through tabletop, and up and back to downward facing dog. How you guys doing, all right? Good, You're looking great. All right, finding our foundation in down dog. I'm gonna get into another family of poses here. So begin by exhaling all the breath from your lungs. Inhale, right leg back. Exhale, step your foot in between your hands. Warrior two, spin the back left heel down and cartwheel the arms up to standing. Good. Now I have open hip pose here. Your front knee is gonna be pointed directly towards the mirror. There's almost a sense of it moving slightly to your right as well. And the knee right over the ankle. Charging strong through the back leg. Think of your left thigh pressing back and the four corners of your left foot rooting down. So turn your toes just a little bit more that way. Yeah, good, and I'll soften the left hip. We have about front heel to back arch alignment. And oftentimes we tend to charge forward in this pose. So think of drawing back through the left arm a little bit. Yeah, so your shoulders are essentially right over the hips and you feel the weight bearing even in your legs. We'll build on this foundation here. Let's exhale completely. Flip the front palm, inhale, reverse, warrior. Right arm lifts up and back. Stay true to the front knee. It's right over your ankle still. And really take some time to breathe deeply into your right side body. Good, right shoulder is soft. And the gaze is soft as well. It can be looking up towards the hand or straight forward, whatever feels the best. Now from here, inhale, begin to straighten through your front leg. Straighten through the front leg. Keep reaching through the right hand. Take a nice deep breath. And on an exhale, triangle pose. Reach forward towards the mirror until you can't anymore. And then hand can come to shin or you can recruit your block here. Maybe eventually floor, but definitely not a goal. Good. Left arm reaching up towards the sky. Now the leg is straightening in the front, but we want to be really mindful that we're not hyperextending or locking it out. So sometimes it's helpful to just soften it for a moment and feel more of the engagement stemming from the thigh muscle as opposed to just the straightening of the leg. And once again, a little shoulder thing. Think of turning gently, beautiful, your rib cage towards the sky. And the right hand is a little pressure wherever it's touching. It can help navigate that turn. Keep your belly and low ribs cinched in. Yes, yeah, so you turn on a nice solid radius and the left hip is pinning back. Exhale all the breath from your lungs. And on an inhale, come on back up to stand. Reaching through the left arm, pull yourself up. Good. Now lift your right toes, turn them towards me. And then we'll turn both toes out, heels in, setting up for a horse pose. Inhale, arms sweep them to the sky. And exhale, hands to heart, bend your knees. Now a new expression in the hips here. Take a moment if you want to slide side to side a little bit. Just kind of feeling it out, lubricating the joints a little bit. We're going to have a longer hold here as well. So pressing palms to heart center when you're ready, shoulders down the back. Keep a deep tone to your low belly. So again, we're supporting that natural curve of the low spine like we've seen pretty much every posture so far. The feet are planted, but the toes are soft. Let's come back to our breathing here. Exhale all the breath from your lungs. And inhale through the nose for one, two, three, four, five, and hold. Exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Just one more like that. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. And exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Good. Let's release. Inhale, arms up. Nice hold, you guys. Straighten your legs, turn your toes slightly in, and bring your arms to a T. Now inhale, lift up through the chest. And on an exhale, wide-legged forward fold, prasarita. You're going to hinge at the hips, Soften the knees as needed, hands to the earth, relax head and neck. Now inhale, think a little half lift here to reorganize the length of the spine and bring the weight bearing even in the four corners of your feet. And then exhale, fold back in. You can walk the fingertips back so they're in line with toes or heels. You can grab the outer feet if you prefer. And we want to think almost like a cobra-like spine. That's a key. So we're lengthening out. And then you can utilize wherever the arms are, hands to floor or feet, to leverage the length that's created by the inhale breath. So inhale is always lengthening, helping us coordinate that. And the exhales can help us, help us to deepen and ground, engage. You can press into feet, every point that's touching the earth. 
Press in. Good. And exhale all the breath from your lungs. On your next inhale, come to half lift. And staying low, exhale, pivot to a lunge facing the front again. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower or straight to down dog. Your choice. Inhale, opens the heart if you lowered through up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. And right back to breath. Right back to foundation. Good. Right. Moving that into the other side, exhale completely. Inhale, left leg reaches back. Exhale, step your foot in between your hands. Warrior two, spin your back heel down and inhale the arms, sweep up. You can even straighten the front leg a little bit as you come up and then deepen back in. So once again, we have the knee pointed directly forward towards the mirrors, even slightly towards, like as if you're turning it towards your baby toe side of your foot. Yeah, the hips might turn a little bit, and then we synchronize that with the foundation of the back leg, pressing the thigh bone back, rooting into the four corners of the feet. So hips are level to the earth, but they don't have to be square to the side of the room. Right arm's lifted in line with the left, and we feel an equal reach between fingertip to fingertip. That looks great on this side, Sean, good. Finding your focus here, we'll exhale all the breath from the lungs. Flip your left palm, inhale, reverse, warrior. Left arm lifts up. Stay true to the front knee. Breathing deeply into the left side body. So reaching from the fingers to shoulders, soft. That's it. Good. Finding a gaze that serves you and your neck. Now from here, on your next inhale, straighten through your front leg. Let me set up for triangle. And if you want a shorter stance, I didn't say this on the other side, but you can always click your back foot in a step. Now one more deep breath, open side. And then exhale, reach, reach, reach towards the mirrors until you can't anymore. Hand to shin, block, maybe floor. Spin your right hip open, your right rib cage to the sky, and right arm reaches up. And right away, we want to find the quality in our front standing leg in particular. So again, maybe softening as needed around the front kneecap and finding more of the engagement and tone around the left thigh. We cinch up the front line of the body, drawing belly and low ribs in, like you're going to pull it towards the back. Yeah, and then you see how you can turn it on the radius of the natural mobility of your spine here. Yeah, good. Gorgeous. Exhale all the breath from your lungs. And inhale, pull yourself all the way up to stand, reaching through the right arm. Take the front toes, turn them towards me. And then we'll set up for our second round of horse, turn toes out, heels in. This time we'll get into the inner line of the legs a little more. Inhale the arms up, overhead, and then exhale, hands to heart, bend your knees. Good. Take your hands to your thighs. You're going to draw them down to the inner knees, let the shoulders shrug a little bit. You can even shift side to side a little bit here. Now this might be plenty for you, and you can absolutely stay here. Otherwise, we'll come on to forearms, bringing forearms to thighs. And there's an option here to reach your hands to shins or ankles if that's available. If not, the hands can just float, and you can still pin the knees back with the elbows. Lift your seat in line with your hips, in line with your shoulders, so you have the natural contours of the spine, more neutral. Fix your gaze one point, neck is long, maybe even close the eyes and come back to some nice deep breaths. This one can be intense as we open up the inner line of the legs, hips, the adductors there. And see if you can bring your breath into the intensity and slow it down. You're really in charge of how deep you go here with this press. So be mindful in what's working for you. Take one more breath together. There we go. And then exhale, release your grip. Grab your inner thighs. You can kind of assist yourself in that external rotation as you come up. And let's get out of the legs. Inhale, straighten them. Good. Turn your toes in so your outer feet are parallel. And exhale, hands behind your back, interlace. Inhale, lift the heart, shoulders back. Soften the knees and exhale, hinge at the hips for Prasari to see. Wide-legged forward fold with chest expansion. Now, as you get all the way down, you might want to straighten your legs a little more. You might want to keep them bent. You can even play around with bending one knee and the other, shaking the head out a little bit. We want that hinge to be at the hips, though, so soft knees often can kind of help that. You'd think belly would be going through the thighs first if you were going all the way down. Good. Is it great, though? Let's take one more deep breath in and out. Bottom of the exhale, by way of low back, release hands to the mat. Inhale, half lift. 
Exhale, pivot lunge to the front. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower or straight to down dog. Inhale, opens the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. A few deep breaths here. We have one more progression in this ascending of the class before we get to the peak that we're moving towards. So digging deep here, finding your breath, and again, modifying as needed, and I'll give some options in this next one. Exhale all the breath from the lungs. Inhale, right leg reaches back. Exhale, step through to lunge. Inhale, crescent, arms sweep back to the sky. So revisiting where we were earlier. So we're gonna open the hip flexors a little bit more. So from this position, clasp your left wrist with your right index and thumb. As you inhale, you can always come to your back knee too if you'd like. We're gonna reach up, press through the heel, and on your exhale, start to take it over to the right for a gentle side bend. Now stay true to this front knee here, right over the ankle, gaze is forward, using this gentle traction on your wrist and arm to deepen into the left thigh. Yeah, that's it, you guys. Good. Inhale, come on back up, release your wrist to crescent, and exhale, flying lunge. Arms come back, and if you're on your knee, the back knee can lift here. Now fix your gaze a few feet in front of you. We're gonna come into a balancing pose, airplane. Soften your left knee, use that as a launch pad to come into your right leg, and then your left leg will float. Keep your chest high. Your chest is definitely not lower than the hips. It can be a little higher or in line with. Reaching back through fingers like we did earlier in our airplane arms. Soft through the right knee, pulling the right hip back. It's normal to feel wobbly. Stay with the breath. One more breath in. Back to flying lunge on your exhale. Nice modification, Kate. Great. Yep, hands to earth is an, always an option. Bring your hands to the mat for lunge. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right leg reaches back. Now pause here for a moment. Anchor your left heel down, and then slowly peel your right hip open. Keep a straight leg, level shoulders, and then you have the option to bend the knee if you'd like. Opening up a little more through the hip. Whatever feels good, keep plugged through the right hand. Inhale, straighten your legs, square your hips. Exhale, step through to lunge. Back to crescent, inhale, arms sweep up. This time, exhale, hands to heart. Now you have the option right away to bring your left knee to the mat, otherwise you'll keep the left leg engaged. Take a deep breath, lengthen, and on the exhale, twist to your right and hook your left elbow outside your right knee. Now if you get our right thigh, once you get there, if you feel like you need to bring the left knee down, please do, do not hesitate. The focus of this is on the twist. So we wanna press elbow into thigh, but we wanna press thigh back into elbow, and that's gonna help us sustain the lower body foundation that we're working on. Inhales, think of lengthening. And exhales, that's where we can find that turn. Beautiful. Let's take one more deep breath. And then exhale, release, hands to the mat. Good. From here, toe heel your right foot out to the edge of the mat and turn the toes out slightly. Scoot your left knee back, or you can keep the knee lifted or bring it down. Might want to bring it down at this point. It's up to you for runner's lunge. So front toes are turned out slightly. Knee can come down, hands or forearms to the mat, and you have the option to use your block here underneath your forearms. And it really has three heights to it. So even if you needed a little bit more support upright, you can use it there. Breathing into this opening through outer right hip, front of thigh, feeling what works. Now there's an option to deepen this pose with a quadricep stretch, twisted monkey lunge. If you wanna go there, bring your back knee down if it's lifted. And plant your left hand to the mat, take your right hand to your right thigh and encourage a little bit of the twist in the spine first. Your left hand informs that turn. And then the right arm will reach back and left knee bends, hand coming to the foot. If the foot feels out of reach but you want that option, you can place the block underneath the left hand again. From here, pressing back, kicking back or pulling in to initiate a deeper stretch through your left thigh. First, second or third part, all optional. Whatever's feeling best for you. Make it about your breath. As your number one intention. I love to see the variations. We'll take one more deep breath here. And on your exhale, if you do have the foot, release it. Bring your hands back to the mat and toe heel your right foot back in. Find lunge position. Hands frame the foot, back knee lifts. From here, step to plank, inhale. And your choice, exhale lower or straight to down dog. Inhale, opens the heart if you lower. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
All right, finding your breath here. All right, exhale completely, empty lungs. We'll try this on the other side, left leg, inhale, reach it back. Exhale, step through lunge. Inhale, crescent, arms sweep to the sky. Now on this side, again, you have an option to bring the right knee down immediately or keep the back knee lifted. Grab the right wrist as you inhale, press back, reach up, and exhale, take it over to your left. I'm breathing down the front right thigh and hip, and keeping front knee right over your ankle. Good. Inhale, come back to center, release your wrist. Exhale, flying lunge, arms sweep back. Fix your gaze a few feet in front of you, soften your right knee, and inhale, airplane pose. Step into the left leg, right leg floats. We're reaching back through the right inner foot. Left leg is strong and sturdy, but not rigid. Make sure you're breathing. Level hips as best you can. One more deep breath. Exhale, flying lunge. Nice focus, you guys. Now bring your hands to the mat for lunge. Plant them and inhale, three-legged dog. Left leg reaches back. Now root your right heel into with straight leg. Begin to peel your left hip open. Dial through the left hand, strong through the right arm, and option, yep, to bend your knee, whatever feels best. Okay, just give it a little break to that frontal hip. Now inhale, straighten the legs, square your hips. Exhale, step to lunge. Inhale, crescent, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart. Now again, you have the option to bring the right knee to the mat, otherwise deep breath in, and exhale, we'll all twist to the left. Right elbow as high up on the left thigh as you can. Elbows in one line, good. And if your back knee's lifted, you're pressing through your back heel. If your knee's on the earth, same idea. We're pressing elbow to thigh, thigh back into elbow. We find the breath here to inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, turn and revolve. Beautiful. Let's take one more deep breath. And exhale, release, hands to the mat. Good. Runner's lunge, toe heel the left foot out to the edge of the mat, turn the toes out slightly. Option to keep back knee lifted or bring knee onto the mat, but bring it far back. Hands to mat. Option for forearms, option for block under forearms. See what works for you. This side might even be a little different. Whenever we're in the hips, there can be some inconsistencies. So listen into that and support yourself as needed. Now option to stay in this first part, of course. If you added the quad stretch on the other side, if the knee is lifted still, bring it down, please. Right hand comes to the floor or to a block. Left hand to the thigh, coordinate a little bit, turn to open, and then left arm reaches back, right knee bends, and we take the foot. Now again, you can kick back to open up more, you can pull in to stretch more through the thigh, you can kind of vacillate between the two, see what feels the best. Maybe it's a little of each, and making it about your breath, always checking back in with the quality of that. One more deep breath together. Exhale, those of you with the foot, release. Good, plant the hands and toe heel the left foot back in until you can frame the foot with the hands. Lift the back knee, lunge. Inhale, step plank position. And exhale, lower or straight to down dog. Inhale, up dog or cobra if you lower. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Take a deep breath then, and on your exhale, walk your hands all the way to the back of your mat. Walk your hands to the back of your mat. Bend your knees as needed, a lot, a little. Once you get there, pause for a moment. Feet stay hip width. On your inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Rise to stand. Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale, arms sweep to the sky. From here, we're going to get right into our peak pose of dancer pose. We'll start standing on the right leg. So on your exhale, bring your left elbow down, palm facing up. You're going to bend your left knee and receive your foot from the inside. Draw the knees to touch, level through the hips, and plug in through the right foot. Right leg is super strong, active. This might be your pose, and that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, deep breath to prepare. On your exhale, slowly begin to kick back through the left knee. Keep your gaze elevated, and the knee is going to disappear behind you so the hips stay level. And inhales, reaching forward and up. Exhales, kicking back. And we try to maintain the hip line as best we can level, but your rib cage is going to turn a little bit due to the kickback with the shoulder and the hand to foot. So allow for that twist. Find your breath here. Last three. Kick a little bit harder for two. And one. Nice, Lydia. Nice save. Inhale. Come on back up. 
And exhale, let's release arms down, feet together. Just feel both feet on the earth. All right, almost there. Inhale, arms sweep up. We'll start the same on the other side. Exhale, right elbow in, palm is up. So super important, when the palm comes down, you bend the knee and you want to grab your foot from the inside. You all had it. Just want to clarify that though. Knees together, left arm reaching up. Take a nice deep breath and exhale, slowly begin to kick and take your time. Little increments of movement here, no momentum. Inhales, we feel the reach and length. Exhales, the drive of the kick back. And again, there's a sense of surrendering the right shoulder back to the kick, honoring the bit of a twist and revolution there in the spine, but the hips stay as level as they can, eventually kind of pointed towards the earth rather than forward. Kicking and breathing, find your focus. Last three, really turn it on here for two and one. Inhale back up, feet together, hands to heart center. And let's close the eyes and take a few deep breaths just on your own. Feeling your body settle in the residue of that big posture. Allowing ourselves the moment to ground that energy. From here, take your hands to your hips. Either step or hop your feet hip width distance. Good. Inhale, lift your heart. Soft knees as you exhale, hinge at the hips and fold. And as you come down, you're going to grab onto big toes. Padangustasana, big toes forward fold. From there, inhale, half lift. Keep a little tension on the toes as you do. And then exhale, fold. Elbows bending out to the side. Legs may begin to straighten. Are you maintaining the length of your spine in the fold? The hinge at the hips. And the elbows bend out to allow space for shoulders to move away from the ears or to continue that pattern. If your legs are straightening, just make sure you're really engaging your thighs. They should be engaged anyways, but to support your hamstrings here. One more deep breath in and out. Nice, Kate, good, oh yeah. <laughs> Exhale, release. And walk your hands back to downward facing dog. Good, from down dog, inhale, right leg reaches back. Exhale, half pigeon. Bring your right knee to the outer line of your right wrist and lay your shin across the mat at an angle that feels okay for your knee. If this does not feel okay, you can come onto your back and take supine figure four. You can also use a block underneath your right hip for a little more support. So back up, take a nice deep breath, really lengthen your spine here. And then on the exhale, if available, you can start to fold in. Hands slowly walking forward, might be hands, might be forms that end up coming down, might be forehead. Either top of left foot or toes under, whatever works. Making sure toes point back, and that's going to aid in a little bit of that action to roll the left hip forward and down. Yeah, you're good. And then we start to really switch gears. Great opportunity to come back to the breath. Long, deep breaths like we did in the beginning. And letting yourself shift gears and feel the support of the earth. Begin to create a little more earthy energy here as opposed to the fire energy we were working with to get to that peak pose. Keeping a gentle tone to the belly. Maybe a little action in the right foot to keep it protected, ankle and knee. And the rest is about letting go, relaxing, and releasing into the pose. Give yourself about three more deep breaths here. And then as you're ready, slowly begin to walk your torso back up. If you have a block, you'll take it out of the way. And then you'll turn your left toes under and press back to downward facing dog. And from there, you might want to pedal the feet you want to lift the leg and open the hip again, you can do that. Whatever feels good to integrate that longer hold. And we'll take it to the other side, left leg, inhale, reach it back. Exhale, half pigeon. Knee to outer left wrist. Lay the shin across the mat, active in the left foot, tone in the belly. Find length, so you can coordinate right hip forward a little bit. And then when you're ready on an exhale, slowly folding in. And really listen to this side, allowing props as needed. 
allowing a slow integration of your depth. The idea is level hips. And once you get into your form, let yourself relax. Coming back to the breath, always an opportunity to do the samavriti, the equal fluctuations of breath on your own time and count. It's just an option, but it can help keep our minds centered, calm, and present in these longer holds where the mind might want to drift. A big portion of the discipline of this practice is through these longer holds and the ability to stay present and connected to our experience. And as mentioned earlier, breathing, we get to literally practice that as we face challenging poses or challenging sensations. We have the opportunity to find our breath within that as opposed to reacting, wanting to move out immediately, continue to fidget, to face it. And that's where we get that beautiful opportunity to respond to what we're experiencing as opposed to reacting and get a choice and practice making that choice over and over again on our mat. Let's take three more deep breaths here. And as you're ready to transition, walk your torso back up. Turn your right toes under and either step right back to down dog or whatever you did on the other side if you lifted your hip or leg and opened your hip. From down dog, inhale, lift your heels, and exhale, come down to your knees. From your knees, you're gonna just walk your knees forward towards your hands. You can either cross ankles or shoot legs to the side, but we're making our way onto our backs for bridge pose. If you know you might want your block for supported bridge, make sure you take it with you so you have it within arm's reach. Let's slowly roll on down, and we'll come to bring our feet hip width distance ankles right underneath the knees. You might be able to reach down and touch your heel with your longest finger, but really that position is about stacking the joints so you can use the power of your legs. Now draw your shoulder blades underneath you, and as you exhale, press into your feet, draw your low belly in so your low back touches the mat, a little posterior tilt of your pelvis. From there, inhale, start to lift your hips towards the sky. Drawing the knees forward, and once you get high enough, you have choice to either take your block and slide it underneath your hips, underneath your sacrum, or just walk your shoulder blades underneath you more and clasp your hands, depending on what energy level you have right now. Either way, whether you're using the support of the block, you are sitting on it a little bit, but we want to keep the anchoring effort of the legs. So think big toe mounds pressing, as if you're hugging a block between your inner thighs. Shoulders are underneath you, back of the head to the mat. You can even press down a little bit to encourage the chin away from the chest. Every inhale, as we lift and lengthen the front line, the chest might move a little closer to the chin. And on the exhales, feel the feet pressing, hug that imaginary block, shoulders back ahead, gently pressing into the mat. Take one more deep breath in, and those of you that have a clasp, release the clasp, and exhale, snake the spine back to the mat, upper middle sacrum. If you're on the block, you'll lift up the block, same thing, slide it out. And then once there, widen your feet to the edges of your mat, and knees drop in towards each other for constructive rest. So knees are bent, feet are wide, and knees drop in. Widen your feet. Yep, there you go. This just enables the spine to decompress after a back bend, taking a moment in neutral. And then from there, walk your feet to touch, knees wide for Supta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle pose. And you can take a moment to open the inner line of the legs and hips that did a lot of work and effort through the practice you encourage us in all those lunge lines and integration of the inner line of the legs. And gravity just works here to open. Good. From here, let's take the hands to the outer knees and then guide the knees in towards each other and draw the knees in, feet up off the mat. And a little squeeze for a moment. And then release your left leg down to the mat and hug your right knee in around your ribs towards your right shoulder, setting up for a supine twist. And give a nice squeeze, deep breath in, 
And on your exhale, release that squeeze and draw your left or right knee across your body. You might lift your hips and bump them a little to your right in that transition. Right arm reaches out to the side, shoulder down. And we're just simply guiding the knee. We're not forcing or pushing. In fact, you can use your block underneath your right knee for some support and grounding, if that feels good. Gaze is either towards the ceiling, to your left, to your right, whatever feels good. Even closing the eyes if you haven't yet. Good. Inhale your knee back to center. Draw your left knee into meat. Yeah, and then we'll release the right leg down and hug the left knee in. Make a drawing around your low ribs towards your shoulder. Give a little squeeze, deep breath. And then exhale, take it over to your right. And again, you can lift the hips and give them a little bump off to your left if you choose. Block is an option underneath your top knee. And the left arm's extending, palm up or down. Gaze up, left or right. I feel pretty relaxed in this twist. You're simply guiding the shape and then letting the breath and the shape do the work. Inhale your knee back to center. Draw your right knee in. Then meet your left. And take it in into happy baby. Bring your feet towards the sky. You have an option to grab your outer feet, your ankles, your shins, whatever's available. You want to create a little pressure pressing feet into hands and pulling back to ground your shoulders, ground your tailbone. If the tailbone's not on the earth, you might shift that grip to be a little higher up the legs. The shoulders are relaxed. You can rock side to side, or you can just be still. A little more active version, opening the inner line and releasing the low back. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then exhale, release the feet, draw the knees in. Give yourself one more final squeeze, one final hug. And release to Shavasana. Legs come down and separate. You can take up a lot of space or a little space. It's more comfortable to bend the knees like that constructive rest position. You can absolutely do that. And draw the shoulder blades underneath you, opening through the heart. Literally allow the earth to receive you, relaxing every bit of your body. You might take a breath or two in awareness at first to help you calm and ground, but then even let the breathing take a back seat. And just kind of bathe in the residue of the practice.